Hey everyone, James here. So today I want to talk about our good or evil friend dot results. Yes, you know what I'm talking about because you probably have some dot results in your app. If you're watching this video and you're using it wrong, you're using async await wrong or tasks specifically wrong when you're using dot net four five examiner and all that stuff. So what I want to kind of walk through today is some issues that you may run into because you're like, Oh, I just want to get this results of something. No, it's called dot result. So here's what's going on. Here's an Android application, right? We have an on create and on start and on resume. Everything looks butter right here. So what happens here is I start to come in and I have an on create and I have a void. And what I want to see here is that the layout's been inflated, finished creating on start on resume. And that would be a lovely, beautiful world. And in fact, if we look over here in our threads and everything going on in our output, we have specifically those four calls. Everything is great. There's no code written. So what happens? when I need to do a long task. Maybe I need to go on the, the, you know, go load something from the internet. Maybe I need to request a permission and the API I'm using is a task. So I need to await on it. So the first thing here is like, here's my task. It's a long task. It literally is just going to run for five seconds and return zero, nothing fancy, but it's just going to take some time. Right? So you might be coming up here and you're saying, well, this is an override void. And I heard that async void is no good which it's not, and you can't change this to task. Obviously it can't be an async task. It's not returning anything. That's literally what the override is. So you can't change that. Or maybe you're in an event, but remember that I'm on the UI thread. Now that's, what's important is on the background thread, you can do different types of things. So for instance, if I'm on a background thread, I might say var task equals long task. There we go. This immediately fires off the task and starts to execute. I may want to do some stuff and then I'll say test out wait. And then I'll say var equals, um, you know, stuff equals task dot result. And this is like how I've maybe done it in the past where I am wanting to fire off a task. I'm going to wait on something. I'm going to result it here. So actually if I run this code, it literally is just going to lock up and it's not going to be good. So I'm on the UI thread, right? So how do I get this? I have this long task and normally in your code, you're just saying var stuff equals, well, I'll just do task dot result, right? It's literally in the name is dot result is to get the stuff from the results. So check this out. I'm going to add some breakpoints here. I'm going to go ahead and say fire off the long task. So it's actually going to fire this thing off immediately. And we'll actually see in the output log, if I was over here, that the actual long running task actually began, um, boom there, um, right here, long running task has actually begun. So it's actually over there and there we go. And I got my dot result and I can go ahead and continue on. Let's go ahead and get no more, no tool tip needed. I continue on and I'm just going to wait and wait. And I can sit here all day essentially because the dot results has just locked my current thread completely. It essentially is gone. I am never going to return ever. And, uh, it's there now dot wait. You're thinking is, well, why don't I do dot wait? It's going to lock my current thread until it, the task finished and things like that. But I'm on the UI thread. You can't do that. It's bad days for everyone. You're saying, James, well, how come back in the day, you know, I'd have something like a task and I would just say long task, you know, dot continue with, right? Continue. Let me go ahead and call this method. I would say dot dot continue with can okay, no, if I can type continue with, and I would say R and then I would put something in here, right? And this is looking pretty good. And in fact, this is a great workaround for doing this is I can say, let's go ahead and pass in a task scheduler dot, uh, from current so synchronization context. So this is going to say, Hey, run this thing. And when I'm done, let me go ahead and get my stuff and watch this puppy. So R dot result. Now this dot result is different than this result because it already finished. It already is running and essentially it's going to call back into this thing when it's done. So after the five seconds, so this is what's great is I start up my task, everything else in my application continues to go, which is beautiful. And then after five seconds and notice that my application too, uh, and that's not a breakpoint is actually responsive too the whole time. So I can click, I can do everything cause it's just doing something on a background area. Now this is totally, uh, acceptable. Uh, if you want to not, if you can't change or can't add async or can't do something on there, um, you can fire off additional tasks. You can say, um, um, dot, you know, uh, factory dot 
start new and you can start a new task and you could spin it up and you could do other things there. Additionally, if you can add an async in here, I know it's an it's more event based, so you probably don't want an async in there. But what you want to do essentially is just say, hey, let's go ahead and just remove this stuff, which essentially is the older school way of doing it. I can just say var result equals await. All right. Now what's happening here essentially is it's snapshotting everything for me. So this means that everything after, this is important to realize, that everything after this is essentially snapshotted into a callback, okay? And if there's any variables above it, it may also save those out. Um, so you can actually use those later. So this is not gonna lock my UI thread. It's not awaiting and locking the UI thread. It's just saying, hey, this thing is gonna happen. When it's done, go do all the stuff after it, okay? So if I come in here and I say, you know, this result um, two, for instance, right? So this is gonna lock this context. When it's done, it's then gonna come in here. But when, now when I run in this application, we're actually gonna see that uh, a few cool, awesome things are gonna occur based off of this. Uh, one is that it's not gonna lock my UI thread. So here, this is gonna spin up. Um, five seconds is gonna occur because it's already going it. My application is totally responsive, which is great. Um, after that five seconds, boom, I hit a breakpoint. Right? I'm not out of my on create though, which my personally, I don't like, I don't like doing that, but it's okay. Um, here, I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna do another long result and notice that my UI is still responsive here, um, which is pretty awesome um, in that instance. Uh, so you're also maybe saying, well, James, this is pretty great that you can do this, but what happens if I'm in a constructor, for instance? So if I had a uh, public main activity here, right? I can't, there's no async. I can't add an async flag on here. That's literally, that doesn't, that doesn't work. So what happens when I want to do something like this inside of here? Well, there's a few things that you can do. Like I said, you can do a task dot um, run for instance, and this is going to you know fire off a new task inside of here. And then you could update your UI here. You know, it'd be the same thing here. You can pass in a cancellation token. You can pass in uh, other functions uh, inside of here, uh, which are good. Um, you can, so of course, mark this as async in that instance. You could do the continue with, right? That would be the other option. The other idea here is don't put that stuff in your constructor. Um, do things when it's on load or when the page is appearing or when other things are occurring. I'm not a big fan of doing things in on create or the app start. You don't want to like lock and you don't want to restrict some issues that may occur there. Um, so the biggest part here is kind of know and be aware that when you dot result or you dot wait on the UI thread, it's bad on the UI. It's either going to stutter your user interface, uh, if it's not the main user interface or it's in that thread, it's the main UI, it's going to either lock it or it's going to stutter it and it's going to be no good for anybody. So stop calling dot result. It's bad. Stop it. Just await it. It makes more sense. And it's how things are designed. It's great. Until next time, I'm James. Hope you enjoy this video and stop using dot result.